Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Jack. If you could kindly find a place uh, to sit, we have a wonderful, wonderful service planned for you today. It's very special. First of all, what a glorious day we have. Every Sunday, I get together and I, I, with my family, and I say, this is the most beautiful day of the year. And they say, well, Pastor Jack, you say that all the time now. But it is. It's a great day to be here. Welcome. We are in the middle of one of our great national holiday weekends, Memorial Day weekend. I wish you a very blessed Memorial Day weekend. You will note in our worship service today, we have several observances for Memorial Day. And we also are going to celebrate a wonderful baptism today for Stella Ruth Biondi. Uh, she is so beautiful, and she will be joined to the family in Christ through baptism in just a few moments. I want to welcome back as our guest musician, Lois Buser. Can you give her a round of applause? Welcome, Lois. Always a joy. Thank you for being with us on this holiday weekend. Well, uh, we always start with the children, so if there are children with us today, it's time to have a little talk. Come on down. Lots to talk about. Good morning. Good morning. Come on down. Good to see you today. What a beautiful day we have today, huh? Look at you. You got your American flag going there. You guys have some flags. Well, tomorrow is a very special holiday. Tomorrow is a national holiday. Does anybody know the name of the holiday? Yes, Troy. Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Does anybody know what the word memorial means? Or can you describe that word memorial? What does that mean to you? Anybody? Memorial Day. What's so special about Memorial Day tomorrow? Besides getting off from school. Is that wh that's what you were going to say, right? Okay. A lot of you are off from school tomorrow, and a lot of you are off from work tomorrow. But what does the word memorial mean? Anybody want to take a guess? Go ahead, Leva. Uh, yeah, it has something to do with soldiers, yeah, and sailors, and servicemen and women all around the globe, and remembering them. What The word memorial, what's it mean? It, yeah, you're getting really close. You're talking about veterans. What else? Correct. Very good, Troy. Went right. The soldiers who gave their lives, and the sailors, and the airmen, and all the the servicemen and women, we remember them in a very special way. So the word memorial actually comes from a word that means remembering. We are remembering those who uh, served in our country. And I have, I have special ways of remembering my father. Some of you have heard me say, my father served in the United States Navy during World War II. And there are ways that I remember my father. There are some things that I cherish and I will share with you today. The first is a photograph that I shared with you about a year ago. These are all the sailors in my father's outfit there, and they were all ready to go out to sea. They had gone through their initial training, and this is World War II. They're all lined up for a team picture before they went off to sea. Now, can you pick out my father in this group? It's a big group. Which one is my dad? Go ahead, pick out my dad. Okay, you say that guy, all right. Who's, who's my dad? Pick out my father. Just look for the most handsome guy in the picture. That's my father. Anybody want to take a guess? Which one is my dad? That one. That one, close. No, you're way off. You can't find the most handsome sailor in the picture? Well, it, he happens to be right there. That's my father. Yeah, and he was all ready to go out into the world as a sailor. He went to the Pacific Ocean with all the brave sailors who went out there during World War II. He's the handsome guy right there, 135 pounds, soaking wet. That, that's what he was. But I have other things to remember my father by, and I, they're very special. 
This is the sailor hat that he wore in World War II, the sailor hat. Now, how old do you think this hat is? Take a guess. How old? 55 years? No, older than that. 80 years. Now we're getting close. Yeah. What do you think? 1865? Yeah, that was the Civil War. Yeah. Um, good guess. That's a good guess. Really. How did you know 1865? That's a good one. That was a, that was a war way before this one. Yeah. Take a guess. Eighty-two. Guess what? We think that this hat is either eighty-two or eighty-three years old. The sailor's hat. My father put that hat on. He went out to sea, and he was one of the brave men and women who went out in on on a big, big ship out in the Pacific Ocean. And then I have something else to remember him by. This is my show and tell. What what do you see here? What's inside of there? Yeah, it's an American flag that is folded into what looks like a big triangle, right? So when my father went to heaven, the sailors took a special flag and they folded it up into this little triangle and uh, they gave me the flag and I will always, always remember my father. Every time I walk into the church house, this is the first thing I look at is the flag in honor of my father. You wanted to say something? No, you can fold the flag. Yeah, they do that at, at, in cemeteries and all that. And then they, they fold it into a triangle. So, yeah, you're allowed to fold the flag. I'll bet several people here have these kind of flags in their homes too, right? For, to honor the veterans who've gone before us. Now, so Memorial Day is a very, very special day for all of us, and especially me because I remember my father's service as a sailor in the United States Navy. Now, before you go anywhere... Let's see if we have any military veterans in the house today. If you're a military veteran, could you please stand if you're able to stand? If you're a veteran, please stand up. And let's thank these men and women. Let's thank them all. Good job. You see that? They, they, they represent the armed services and those who have gone before them. Thank you very much for your service, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so let's thank God for the brave men and women who fought for the cause of freedom and justice all around the world. Can we pray together? Let's pray together. Oh Lord, we thank you for the service men and women who have gone before us and are now at rest in your heavenly kingdom. We thank you for the veterans who are with us and all around the world as they gave of themselves bravely and valiantly to serve justice and freedom. And we remember those who are currently enlisted in the armed forces, wherever they may be. They may be deployed all around the globe. And we, we pray, Lord, that you'll watch over them, protect them, and, and guide them each and every day. And we pray that these young men and women will come home safely someday. We pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So tomorrow, when you observe Memorial Day, there might be a, there might be a parade somewhere nearby. Uh, but I want you to say a prayer, and I want you to thank all the people who have served our country well uh, in the armed forces, and they, they served brilliantly and bravely. Okay? Can you pray about them tomorrow? Is that a deal? Yes. Okay. God bless you. You can go back to where you are in the, in the congregation. And we will continue with our prelude today.
Yeah, yeah, the prelude. There you, there you go. <laughs> That was fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Let's celebrate a baptism. Let's bring Stella up here. Stella Ruth Biondi, her parents and grandparents. The words to the baptismal ceremony will appear on your monitor screens today. And here's some copies for you guys as well. There you go. If you could all stand behind the font and face the congregation. Here are the words to the ceremony. Do we need another copy? Here we go. Very good. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. I now present Stella Ruth Biondi for the sacrament of holy baptism. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Stella baptized into Christ? If so, would you answer, we do. As you bring Stella to receive the gifts of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with Stella among God's faithful people, to bring Stella to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, and to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Stella grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, would you answer, we do. And people of God, do you promise to support Stella and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, would you all answer, we do. If you are able, could you please stand at this time? <clears throat> and now I ask everyone assembled here, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, would everyone answer, we do? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. And at the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that Stella, who will be washed in the waters of baptism, may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated at this time. And it's time to baptize this beautiful girl. Let's do that. Let's do that. If you could bring Stella a little bit closer and 
Just kind of like tilt her over the font. Here we go. Stella Ruth, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, there you go. Hi. Wow, not even a peep, and the water was kind of cold, too. <laughs> that was me. I'd be screaming bloody murder right about now. <laughs> Stella Ruth, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. This is a very, <clears throat> very special candle. We ask that you take this candle home with you and light that candle once each year on the anniversary of Stella's baptism to remember the light into which Stella was born in the family of Jesus Christ, the light of baptism and the light and promise of eternal life. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share, joining us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. May I have Stella? Would she come say hi to me for a minute? Yeah. Hi, sweetheart. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and girls, it gives me great joy to present to you for the very first time our newest member, of the family of Christ. This is Stella Ruth Biondi. How about a round of applause, huh? <laughs> you caught me too, huh? Say hi. Say hi. Is she adorable or what? Oh my. Look at this, sweetheart. Look at this. Uh, oh, say hi to your church family. Say hi to everybody. Look at them smiling back at you. They're happy right with you, honey. Look at that. Oh, she is an absolute angel, I'm telling you. you. You are so blessed. I just want to congratulate you on this special day, congratulate you on this gift of a beautiful Stella Ruth. And before you go back, I have certificates, certificates for you and the godparents. Uh, Mom, you want to take them? And you can also take this cloth as a memento of the baptism. So... God bless you once again. A round of applause for Stella Ruth. Congratulations. C congratulations, everyone. You may return to your seats. Please rise. Please rise.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated now as we share our assigned scripture readings for today. The reading for this, the day of Pentecost, is from the Acts of the Apostles, the second chapter. Pentecost was a Jewish harvest festival that marked the 50th day after Passover. Luke portrays the Holy Spirit being poured out upon the disciples before the gathered and astonished people assembled in Jerusalem for the festival. Filled with the Spirit, the disciples were able to witness to the power of Christ's resurrection. St. Luke writes, when the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? <laughs> but others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the reading. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel <clears throat> according to St. John, the 20th chapter. The risen Jesus appears to his disciples, offering them a benediction, a commission, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. St. John writes, 
When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met and were locked for fears of, of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Please have a seat, everyone. Well, today <clears throat> I greet you in the name of the victorious Lord and also in the name of the refreshing Holy Spirit we're here to recall today. But before I start my message, I want to remind you that there are free Bibles available in the back of our sanctuary. There's a table uh, of Bibles collected there. Please take one or more Bibles with you, and the best part is they are absolutely free of charge. So take God's Word, read God's Word, share it with other people, bring a Bible to your neighbor or your friend or someone else in your life, okay? So please take the Bibles absolutely free. I want to tell you a little story about something that happened when I was in seminary at uh, Gettysburg Lutheran Seminary in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Now, uh, when I was in seminary, it feels like it was shortly after Abe Lincoln gave the Gettysburg Address. That's what it feels like. Um, we're talking uh, about 38 years ago. At that time, I was a seminarian, and seminarians were deployed on Sunday mornings to go out and preach to uh, vacant congregations. These are congregations without pastors and so forth. So one Sunday morning, I was sent somewhere in Maryland. It took me two hours to drive to this church in the middle of Maryland from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Or if you're from Gettysburg, you say Gettysburg. It's like Lettuceburg. Right, Al? You know. And so I drive from Gettysburg to the middle of Maryland and to the church I'm assigned. I get there, and I was astounded. The church looked a lot like the church that appears on your monitor screen. It was an old rural church in the middle of nowhere. And you know how a lot of old churches have cemeteries in the back, a big cemetery? Well, this church had a cemetery in the back, a cemetery on both sides, a cemetery in the front. There was a huge cemetery, and this church was in the middle of the cemetery, literally. And I got to thinking, man, there's a lot of dead people around here. But I was even more startled when I walked in the front door of this old church because inside there were also a lot of dead people in there too. Now, I'm in no position to pass judgment, and it's probably not appropriate of me to, to describe a congregation this way, but they were spiritually dead. They were unexpressive in worship. They were unexpressive of their faith. The liturgy was boring. Nobody got excited about what was going on. It, it was really a dead church. They were, they were spiritually dead people. I'll give you an example. You know, in, in, our, in our liturgy during communion, when I say, the Lord be with you, and then you say, and also with you, well, I say, the Lord be with you, and also with you. Oh, you're much more enthusiastic than they were. <laughs> this is what it sounded like. The Lord be with you, and also with you. <laughs> lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Ah, oh. oh, yeah, it is, it is right to give him thanks and praise. Now, I'm slightly exaggerating, but this church had no fire, no enthusiasm, no vim and vigor. They're just God's chosen frozen. And I hate to be so critical, but, you know, I thought, what is going on? Is this the church 
of the Great Depression? Are they all depressed? Is this a church of, you know, the God's chosen frozen? And when I left that worship service that afternoon, I'm driving back to Gettysburg and I'm thinking, is this what God is calling the Christian church to be right now? Are we supposed to be sitting around like we're bored out of our minds? Are we supposed to be sitting there with no energy, no enthusiasm, no excitement, and then have our little cup of coffee and go home? Is that what God wants from God's church? And the answer, I believe, is a resounding no. No. In the New Testament, this is what it says in the book of Hebrews. Look at the monitor screen today. It says, lift your drooping hands, strengthen your weak knees. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. You have come to God. And then the book of Revelation quotes Jesus in the heavenly kingdom. And the first thing Jesus says is, behold, I make all things new. What I'm saying is the biblical testimony of the Holy Spirit says that the Spirit is joyful, the Spirit is exciting, the Spirit is enlivening, the Spirit uh, energizes everyone to whom it comes into contact. Now, if you look at the Holy Scriptures, and I'll just make some brief references. How is the Holy Spirit described in the Bible? In the creation story, do you recall a part in creation where it says the spirit moved over the waters? Well, the Hebrew word for spirit is ruach. That literally means energizing force, an energizing breath. So God literally breathed on this planet, breathing the life of, of spirit and energy. And then Adam was created. And you recall from the scriptures that Adam did not come to life until God breathed the spirit into the man we call Adam. Life-giving spirit. And then in the book of Ezekiel in the Old Testament, there's a story of dry bones on the ground. Just a bunch of dry skeletons. But then God's spirit comes upon the dry skeletons. All of a sudden, they, they stand up. They grow flesh. And all of a sudden now, they're invigorated men and women of God. In our gospel lesson today, another example of the Spirit being energizing. It says that Jesus got his friends together after the resurrection and literally breathed on them. He breathed the Holy Spirit upon them. He said, receive the Spirit. It was a spirit of energy, enthusiasm, and excitement. And then the ultimate manifestation of that Spirit is what we're observing today. We are recalling the day of Pentecost as Al read so appropriately in our first reading today, the disciples were all sitting in a room minding their own business when all of a sudden the Spirit came on them. It's described as a violent wind, a rush of energy, a rush of excitement. They were so excited they started speaking in different languages. They couldn't wait to go out into the world to proclaim Jesus as Lord of Lord and Savior of all. Now, if you look at the story of the giving of the Spirit, the energizing Spirit, nowhere does it say, Peter decided, let's all take a nap right now. Let's just lie down and take it easy. No, when they received the Spirit of God, they were employed and deployed to go out into the world. That's what I'm saying. The Spirit of God is an invigorating Spirit. And you know what? Stella Stella today received the same Holy Spirit that I just described and how it's described in the scriptures, a spirit of life and vitality. This little girl received a great gift today as the Spirit came upon her. So I ask you this question. What church do you want to belong to? Do you want to belong to God's chosen frozen or do you want to belong to a church that is on fire for Jesus Christ? You know the answer to that. And I'm delighted to share with you that this church is on fire. This congregation is on fire for Jesus Christ. Just in the last couple of weeks, I'm seeing an invigorated energy around here. 
We, we, we finally cleaned out some of the old junk that was down the hall. We're going to bring our classrooms back to life. We're going to invigorate the neighborhood. We're going to welcome people into our fellowship because we are people on the move. We're not called to sit still. We are called to go out into the world and make a difference because we are fired up for Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what we're going to do. The Spirit is alive in this place. I've seen it year after year. And I rejoice with you. When I come to Holy Trinity, I always feel energized by you. And more importantly, energized by the Spirit of God that motivates you. Do you realize how many dedicated people we have in this congregation today? There are dedicated people. And I know because I live right next door. And when I'm home and look out the window, there's always somebody here. Seriously, it's funny. Morning, noon, and night, somebody's here volunteering, doing something. But more importantly, we're out in the world and we're doing things in the name of Christ. What's the bottom line? We are not called to be God's chosen frozen. And thanks be to God, we are the invigorated body of Christ in this place. We are energized, we are renewed, we are excited, we're on fire, and I invite you to ride the wave of excitement with me today. If you are a visitor today and you're looking for a church that's on fire, well, don't go anywhere else because you found your place right here. We have a dedicated choir. Joanne, I want to thank you. Dr. Schaefer has been leading this choir even though we have not had a music director for a year and a half. And we have great choir anthems. Thank you, Joanne. We have a Sunday school that is very, very enlightening and energizing. We have people that come and do work in the community. We have the largest food collection of any congregation in this area to help the poor. We have a group called Rise Up that helps the impoverished in our area. We are on fire. Just yesterday, uh, Jay Decker. Jay, I want to thank you again for a wonderful job of coordinating a community breakfast. We fed a lot of people. We didn't charge any money for it. It was our way of nurturing because Jesus said, when I was hungry, you gave me food and you go out there and make a difference. Jay, I applaud you as well. What I'm saying is I could go all around this congregation and applaud each and every one of you and I want to say thank you as your pastor because I am proud of you. I am very happy to be with you. And I rejoice in front of Almighty God for you. When I get in my prayer chair, I thank God that we are not God's chosen frozen. So God bless you all. Remain the spirited people that you are today. May God continue to bless you, invigorate you, and energize you to do such great work. Because our national church has a slogan, and I leave it with this. God's work, our hands. I thank you for being the hands of Jesus Christ here and everywhere because you have the Spirit of God in your hearts. Thanks be to God. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Hallelujah. You may be seated at this time. Dr. Shaper has a very special anthem to offer, a very patriotic anthem. And Dr. Shaper, I understand that if you hear your service branch represented, you should stand up, right? So if you're a veteran of the Army and you hear the Army song, you stand up. If you're a veteran of the Navy and you hear the Navy anthem, you stand up. Is that right, Joanne? Is that what we're doing? Amen.
We will now have our offering today, and just as God was generous with his only begotten Son, we are also generous in responding to God's grace. Please give as generously as you can to support the missions and ministries of this congregation far beyond the walls of this building. Let us pray, generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth in the breaking of the bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord, amen. If you are able, could you please stand at this time? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now we join to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Holy Communion is offered for everyone here at Holy Trinity. And when you receive your wafer, you will be asked to go to a station where we have pre-filled glasses. The outer glasses with the dark fluid, that's wine. The inner glasses are grape juice or apple juice. And if you prefer a gluten-free wafer instead of this wheat wafer, the gluten-free wafers are located on uh, the table over there in a small candy dish. Again, everyone is invited to receive. Just follow the instructions of your ushers. You may be seated at this time. <clears throat>
If you are able, please stand once more. <clears throat> Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world. In Jesus' name, amen. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. And um, <clears throat> Joan, between the pollen and God bless America, I'm losing my voice. I don't know about you, but no, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great I'm way fine. to... Does that mean you're not going to interrupt me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For the first time in your life, I'm not going to interrupt you. <laughs> okay. But uh, let's thank Lois again. Lois, what a, what a great job. Great job. And we, we usually don't do this, but let's thank our choir. What a great job the choir has done. <laughs> choir. And now it's all you. This is Joan Cosgrove. She's our council president. Joan, there's a lot on the docket here, right? A lot going on. All right, go ahead. First Okay, on the bottom of your, uh, your, your uh, pamphlets, there's a little space where you can honor your, your, um, the ladies in your life, whether it's your mother, your girlfriend, your next door neighbor, somebody that's helped you out. Just tear that off and there's a basket in the back uh, where, you can, where you can put everything. Okay, and next we have the beautification basket and we have somebody to tell us all about it. I'm sorry, it's Joyce <laughs> and Ellen, and Ellen. <laughs> my team. <laughs> yes. Good morning, church family. Um, we still are uh, collecting offerings for our beautification of the church. As Pastor has said, that we clean many, many rooms out in the church to offer it to the community. And uh, I think you have a flyer that the uh, council brainstormed as to things that we would like to see happen within the church. The beautification basket is at the entrance of the church, and all offerings we, we accept greatly. I'd like to read you scripture regarding beautification from 2 Corinthians. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a, a good giver. One other thing you may notice on the walls within the sanctuary and in the rooms we have now what is called, it was called the Heimlich Maneuver, but now the name has changed to the Conscious Choking. 
And here are directions if you see somebody choking on the goodies that we always have in the back or when we have at meeting times. So we just call your attention to this also. And Ellen has the basket. And we thank you very much. Before I go any further, I'd like to thank Jay again, too. We went to the breakfast yesterday. So many volunteers get up at 5 in the morning just to serve us breakfast. Isn't that nice? Once a month. Do you want to say something? Oh, that's good. That's good. Yes. And George is a heck of a, a scramble egg maker. Okay, we're going to have our first volunteer fair on uh, June 4th. It just means that we have many, many, many jobs that have to be done in the church, and we're asking for volunteers. So we're going to have the meeting, and, you know, I know I was guilty the last time uh, when we had one of these. I checked everything off, forgetting that I was supposed to be at every one of those meetings. So, so when you do, select something that you really want to be part of and, and enhance, and that's, that's the thing you check off, okay? Lunch and learn, a lot of fun. Bring your sandwich, bring your coffee, whatever. It's usually an hour long. It's a, a Bible study, and it's going to be on June 7th. This is the first. The outdoor movie for the kids is going to be on June 10th. It's going to be outside in the back. He's, now he's making noise. Now she's making noise. Uh, it's going to be outside. It's called The Sandlot, and it should be fun. We're going to be serving pizza. We're going to be serving popcorn, and we're going to be serving water. So come bring all your... your uh, neighbors, your friends, whatever. It should be a lot of fun. The only thing is we do ask you to bring your own chair, a comfy one. Uh, Welka is meeting at Norbu on 613. This is our annual uh, bring your husband, bring your significant other, bring your friend. It's the only time we invite the men. So it's, it's a potluck dinner and it's always a lot of fun. Um, we are going to, does anybody have any other announcements before I, no, okay. We're going to be, every year what we do is we march out to um, uh, America, I believe it's in God Bless America, and we go outside and we have a bell outside that we ring for a lost one or somebody to be remembered. Okay, so join us as soon as we sing um, our song. We get up and go out. Anybody else? Go in peace. Serve the risen one.
section something.
Let's go in and have some coffee. Let's go. God bless you. God bless you all.